Hi, good day. Tim Neal from Precision Agriculture here. I'm going to talk about RTK GPS and some of the software we've been using to manage wheel tracks in, in controlled traffic and raised bed farming um, and to sort of show you how some of the new technology can be used to manage these um, issues with water control and, and rutting of wheel tracks. Um, so basically, I'm an agricultural consultant based in Toowoomba. Um, we run a uh, Australia-wide New Zealand uh, precision ag business with 10 people. Um, we work all over the world as well but uh, primarily in Australia and New Zealand. I've been working on controlled traffic farming since 1995 um, and this is the presentation I gave at the International Controlled Traffic Farming Conference. Um, I've been doing basically looking for the last 10 years a lot of work on the farm layout so it's very important to get the farm layout right uh, when you're doing controlled traffic or raised bed farming so I'm going to talk a bit about how we actually do that um, ourselves. First of all um, if you want some free training videos on control traffic or guidance systems or no-till we've got a few on our website under the training video section feel free to jump on there and they just go through to a YouTube link so um, jump on there and have a look at some of those that we've got. Um, typically our layouts in Queensland for control traffic look a little like this where we have a series of contour banks you can see those running through the field here um, that are in the in the field uh, and we're trying to hit those at right angles with the with the machinery and typically going up and down the slope to to um, improve the, the drainage and also to help with erosion a bit so while it looked like you know tip you might think that this might erode more but in fact if if each row here each wheat row here and each wheel track carries the same water then you get very little erosion it actually keeps it spread like a roof uh, like a tin roof if you like um, if we if we get deep wheel tracks or we don't have good row definition then we can end up with quite a few wheel track erosion problems but this is this is how we're typically laying out farms in Queensland, northern New South Wales. Um, it's not for everyone, but it, it does work in a lot of areas and also reduces the the amount of overlap that people have. And typically, you've got a 10 to 20 percent overlap reduction just by doing this, even without guidance systems. I'm just going to show a quick video now of something I took after the 2011 floods, and um, you can see um, in here you'll see as we go through you'll see that um, and this is on YouTube too if you want to have a look um, you, you'll see that each row here this is about after 8 inches of rain uh, very wet summer um, you'll see as we walk through the field that each each row here has carried its own water very effectively and that's what we want to see you'll see there's a tiny little bit of erosion down each row but the amount of water that we've had you'll get that terracing like what you're seeing there, you'll see that the stubble will build up a bit and then stop. And as I walk down here, you'll probably see another little terraces of stubble um, where we get a little bit of erosion and deposition, but it basically stays not too far from where it was. And and hopefully you'll see that each row here of sorghum, in this case, carries the same water down the field. Um, and that way you don't get the concentration, which causes the big problems. Um, with with erosion when you, when water concentrates, uh, and that's this is an example from Darling Downs after some pretty heavy rain. Um, but in some cases we do get this happening, and and where wheel tracks are sunken, water will naturally congregate in those areas and and wash them out. So wheel track erosion is a significant problem in a lot of areas, and especially after the couple of years of really wet weather we've had, um, this has become a big problem. So. We've got to manage, is prevent this from happening in the first place, and then manage, um, hopefully these these wheel tracks from getting any deeper or, or getting this sort of problem because it is very hard to fix when there's sort of very narrow bits of erosion there. Um, but yeah, in this case, we've um, where water's concentrated, it's definitely eroded. Uh, this is a picture from South Australia where we've had the same problem, a little sort of a disc cedar being used, of quite a shallow. Uh, sort of fairly shallow wheel track but you can see it's concentrated the water and it's eroded out so 
and and that might not, not look too much erosion at this stage, but it, it's very difficult to put that soil back. And if we use any sort of leveling, then it just creates a bigger furrow. So we've got to try and prevent this happening in the first place um, um, before before it gets too bad. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. Also, we've seen after flooding, you'll see this sort of thing happening where wheel tracks are holding a significant amount of water. And interestingly, down the bottom of the screen there, you can see as it comes out onto the road verge, um, where the, the, it meets the um, public road, um, there there is a considerable jump up. So, you know, that, that the layout direction in this case is, is causing quite significant water logging problems. And, and on this farm, it's, it's actually directing water from other parts of the farm, and putting it down lower in the landscape, which is not, not ideal because we don't want to be diverting water anywhere or concentrating water. Um, this is a photo of my mate Steve Laroque from Canada when he when they came over and visited a few years back after the sort of around that 2011 flood time where a harvester had been through and you can see the depth of the wheel tracks that we have problems with here on on the black soils and and so they a, a significant squashing up there of that of that um, of, of that wheel track and that's on a controlled traffic 12 meter controlled traffic farming system. Uh, another thing about controlled traffic is that if we do keep the water spread nicely, often we'll get to the end of the runs where they need headlands uh, around the ed ends of the fields. And you'll see here this headland has uh, concentrated quite a bit of water and um, and has washed away uh, quite a bit of soil there. So it is important to um, manage your headlands uh, just as much as your sort of main paddock area. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but there is um, just about every guidance system that's available now on tractors will also provide you with high accuracy elevation data. And that's very, very important for actually looking at water flow. And this elevation data is extremely accurate. Um, it, it, it's, it's sort of less than five centimeters vertically, and which means we can get lots and lots of information over the whole field, like if you're doing a, a planting operation, a seeding operation, you're going every eight meters or nine meters, then you're collecting a heck of a lot of elevation data, which is very useful. We then grab that data, the the, the elevations, um, and convert those into topography maps, and that's the first step we do. We're also using OptiSurface, and um, if you have a look on YouTube or on OptiSurface website, you'll see all about it. We've been using that, and it's really changed the way we look at water logging and erosion control in Australia. I'll firstly touch on water logging, then I'll I'll go into erosion in a minute. Um, this is our typical contour map that we produce for a client, and this came comes off the elevation data uh, from the machine, and you can see there they're every uh, 10 centimeters elevation contour lines. It's very very detailed information, and even up here you can see uh, up towards the top there's a, a ponded area and you can see the impact in the stubble there just on the photo um, that it is having a significant impact on the on the flood uh, on the uh, flooded areas there so topography data is a critical layer to start with anyway and it does help you plan um, pretty simply so that's the first step and a good satellite image or aerial image underneath is very important uh, if we take that same paddock and put that into OptiSurface and we add some wheel tracks and if we assume that his run direction is the way that the black line is indicating um, it shows that wheel tracks uh, are going to pond quite a bit. I might have put about a 20 centimeter deep wheel track here I think. Um, um, you know that that's showing that basically the wheel tracks in all those areas where it's purple is uh, full of water. So. By running it that way, it's going to create a significant water logging problem in this field, and and I already know that there is a, an erosion problem in this field because when the water breaks out of those wheel tracks eventually, um, it will then cause erosion. Um, by even though the country is extremely flat, uh, it will will erode because of the concentration. Uh, this is all possible in optic service, and when I turn that around and put the wheel tracks to run that direction, or the direction of the black line almost east-west, um, you'll see that the ponding dramatically reduces. And so, you know, we can drain paddocks effectively with wheel tracks um, if we get the right direction. And you'll see up here there is a, still a, 
on the north part there's a there's still a per big large purple area that's the bit we saw that i pointed out in the last in the slide before and we're actually going to put a little drain in there to drain that away so yeah it can manage the ponding quite quite significantly uh, here's another example this is from the darling downs where this is the just the elevation um, data the little black dots that you see there are actually collected from from the machine as he's doing a normal activity and we can put that into Opti service and get this the crude elevation map the next thing we can do then is a ponding map and this doesn't include any wheel tracks but what it shows is that there is some native areas of this field that are ponded and um, they need fixing up and it's interesting though that uh, when we add a wheel track into this into this scenario this is what we get so you'll see there that uh, if we go north south and that's the direction it is running it, it dramatically increases the amount of ponded area just by adding those deep wheel tracks if we turn that round to running east west in this field and this field's uh, 120 hectares you'll see that it, it fixes some of these ponded problems like up here and here but then creates new ones over here on the right so the purple areas are the, the areas that are uh, quite deep ponding and the wheel tracks so you can actually uh, change the dynamics of, of ponding with wheel track run direction and this is exactly the same for raised beds obviously um, OptiService is good we can do some cut fills maps as, a, as an output and the one on the left which is a 4D design so what it is is no wheel tracks to split the water run any direction out of the field the cut fill there was 16 cubic meters a hectare um, so very very low earth movement to, to get that paddock to drain naturally but because we have wheel tracks we've decided to actually make the water run sort of in an east west direction like on the on the on the, on the image on the right shows uh, the cut fill again and this is 130 cubic meters a hectare so a fairly big increase in the cut fill requirements but with wheel tracks you need to make sure those run properly um, yeah and I guess it's still a lot less than land leveling and what it does is it works with the natural surface of the ground to actually um, uh, enable water flow and, and this is very flat land like this natural slope here is 0 0.04 0 0.05 which is about what minimum we're using to actually to um, have drainage. You need that sort of level to minimum to have drainage. There's another image here, uh, just another video of um, of of us uh, actually in the field. We've actually done a a, um, a some layout work here, uh, given a um, this is. Um, where we've we've put or changed the run direction, you can see the water running out of this field uh, quite clearly. And each row there, each row of favour beans, this is obviously uh, this is in Victoria. Sorry, in the high rainfall zones of Victoria, uh, uh, running water quite well. And that's without any sort of raised beds whatsoever. It's just natural uh, furrows from from wheel tracks and from the furrowing in the in uh, where we've planted the crop. Let's look at erosion. Um, OptiService also allows us to look at erosion modelling, which is really interesting because I don't know of any other software that enables us to do that. Um, so what we've done here is you can actually simulate a storm event and put your, your sort of ground roughness properties in. So at the top there you can see hydrology, you can put your simulated rainfall events in you grab your 24 hour and 1 hour designs from your, your local Bureau of Meteorology and you can get those for any location pretty well in Australia definitely but you can probably get that for anywhere in the world where you can actually just um, get those intensity numbers and plug them straight in then you can change the proportion of run runoff um, that you want to run off uh, so probably a proportion of rainfall that you want to run off and the roughness of the ground and so 0.02 in this case uh, that you can see on here uh, is a typical typical bare soil uh, in Australian sort of numbers and that's uh, Manning's N um, so you just there's a there's plenty of information on that on the internet and then you can put furrows or beds in there and you can see I've ticked furrows or beds restrict water flow so you can actually put the angle of the, the beds or the 
the furrow. Um, it might be irrigation furrows. It could be controlled traffic lines. It could be uh, raised bed farming in vegetables or whatever you'd like. You've set up your, your bed structure there as it, as it is in the field. And you basically, uh, those things go into um, uh, the erosion modelling, which is really good. Uh, this is some rainfall intensity charts for Queensland. So, you know, you can get these for anywhere in the world, like I said, but that's what they look like. You just read off your one hour and your 24 hour durations off there um, and then put those in and, and the simulated storm event duration that you want and it will, it will calculate that. Now this is an example of what we, this some of the outputs. Um, you can see there's runoff velocity on the left um, and runoff depth on the right. This paddock is a couple of hundred, uh, well, a couple hundred hectares, I think. It's quite a reasonable size field. And you can see the, the red areas are the high risk, definitely for erosion. Um, and, and it's exactly in the field, that field there is exactly where the erosion is occurring. So it, it really does highlight um, without any rain falling on the paddock, you can tell where the risk areas are going to be. Um, yeah, and, and that's been really helpful. On the right, shows you the runoff depth, and you can see the waterway uh, on the left hand side of, the, of theirs is filling up with water about 30, 30 centimetres deep, and the contour banks on the, on the right hand side of that image are filling up sort of now it's at um, yeah, 20, 20 or 30 centimetres deep as well. So you can actually see. The, um, you can actually predict how deep the water is going to be at all parts of that field given those conditions that you've set in that previous previous uh, screen. So that, that's been very useful for determining uh, like erosion hotspots, positioning of waterways, positioning of contour banks, um, and overall, just overall too, just about understanding um, um, how a paddock operates uh, under a rainfall event without having to have any rainfall. Then that's the same paddock, but what we've done here is add furrows, uh, control traffic lines, and you can see on the left I'm going east-west, and you know you'll see how different that is to where he's actually running north-south at the moment, uh, which is the image on the right, and you can see that there's quite a few red dots on this right hand side. That's exactly where the erosion is occurring, and and so the furrows uh, from the control traffic are actually impacting on that. So this can be used to design sort of your best run direction um, um, on that field, you know, without even having to change the direction. So it's very, very useful for doing that. And you can put whatever sort of depth wheel tracks or beds you want to do in there. And, you know, this could be the same for horticulture with raised beds, for example. So very useful tool. Now, wheel track renovation is a very important thing. Uh, I think we've learned over the last couple of years that it's absolutely critical to keep your wheel tracks managed. And, and sort of smoothed. Um, this is one of the machines you can buy. It's called a Grizzly uh, Control Traffic Renovator. Um, they've sold lots of these in the last few years. Uh, very good machine. Very very aggressive though, and only works where you don't have um, sort of eroded wheel tracks. If you have eroded wheel tracks, you just put you sort of robbing Peter to pay Paul. I guess you're pulling dirt in from the side to fill a hole that, and basically you're making that wheel track. Uh, depression larger so this is really for where soil squashes up and it needs to be leveled back out again so um, very very useful tool and I think uh, we've seen a heck of a lot of these sold to manage control traffic wheel tracks in the last couple of years um, so I guess the key steps I think to manage wheel tracks better in a control traffic system would be to rotate your spray and that's where the most problems are coming from is our boom sprays are getting narrower and heavier and uh, narrow tyres, I mean, um, and wider. It's lots more water, lots more weight, and on narrow tyres, it just creates huge problems. You can rotate those tracks and stick them onto the track adjacent to you occasionally to try and um, minimise that you know, severe damage on those tracks. And also, if you're buying your spray, you make sure you get the tyre the, the package that's got is wider um, than the than the sort of standard ones as wide as possible. Again, look at your layout, try and minimize those ponded areas, therefore you'll get less rutting. Um, be careful when using disc seeders on, on, on steeper slopes because they don't they, they leave the surface flat. So they don't encourage natural sort of water flow down those um, each row, like I said right at the start. 
So be very careful with those that you don't, um, yeah, you don't uh, have the problem where you're accumulating water in those wheel tracks uh, because it's so flat across the whole the whole growing area. Um, again, using those wheel track renovators I just showed you, where it's practical and where it's useful, don't. I think you've got to look at some other strategies if they're severely eroded because it's not going to really help the problem. And land leveling is going to fix some of those core issues, so it's best to um, do that in course as well. Thanks very much um, for listening, and uh, yeah, jump on our website if you want any more information. Thanks.